Welcome folks. Today we're diving into the gripping world of a classic TV series from 1964. Now, some of you might have stumbled upon it, while others might be hearing about it for the first time. It's called 12 O'Clock High, and it's a gem worth exploring. The series unfolds against the backdrop of World War II, revolving around the challenges faced by the brave men of the 918th Bomb Group. No frills, no fancy twists, just raw, compelling storytelling that pulls you into the heart of wartime drama. But here's the hook, stay tuned, because we've got a bunch of funny, shocking, and even heart-wrenching facts about this series that you wouldn't want to miss. Now, let me throw a couple of questions your way. Ever found yourself inspired or impacted by 12 O'Clock High? We'd love to hear your personal stories in the comments below. And here's another one, got any lesser known facts or anecdotes about the show that fascinate you? Share away. Before we wrap up, tell us about your most cherished memory or personal experience tied to this series. Your stories matter to us and we're all ears. Drop them in the comment section. All right, time to hit that play button and explore the world of 12 o'clock high. Remember, we're waiting for your stories down below. Stay tuned for the interesting tidbits, and as always, keep it real. In the realm of classic military TV dramas, there's one show that stands out for its gripping portrayal of World War II air combat. Premiering in 1964, it follows the trials and triumphs of the 918th Bombardment Group. Set in England, the show delves into the challenges faced by the crew, led by General Frank Savage, as they navigate the complexities of war. From strategic decision-making to the bonds formed amidst adversity, the series captures the essence of wartime experiences. Over its run, the show earned acclaim for its realism and emotional depth, leaving a lasting impact on television. Its legacy serves as a powerful reminder of the sacrifices made during wartime. A notable figure in the cast of the series, Robert Dornan served as Captain Robert Fowler, Colonel Gallagher's frequent co-pilot. Dornan's background as U.S. Air Force fighter pilot along with his service in the California Air National Guard during his time on the show, added authenticity to his portrayal. Later known as B-1 Bob during his tenure as U.S. Congressman, he was recognized for his support of the Air Force's procurement of the B-1 Lancer Heavy Bomber. Another key actor, Robert Lansing, brought a rugged presence to the screen in various roles, including his portrayal in 12 O'Clock High. With a career spanning Broadway and television, Lansing's performance contributed to the series' success showcasing his versatility in the realm of action drama. Paul Burke, known for stepping into lead roles in television series, replaced Robert Lansing in 12 O'Clock High. Burke's ability to seamlessly take over prominent characters, including in this series, demonstrated his adaptability and contributed to the show's continued popularity. The TV series depicts B-17 crews without proper gear, despite the necessity of oxygen masks and heated flight suits at high altitudes. This inaccuracy persists throughout the show, with some crew members even lacking gloves. Additionally, the portrayal of Colonel Frank Savage as a group commander is unrealistic, as a brigadier general like him would not hold such a position in real life. Typically, a field grade officer would lead, while someone of Savage's rank would serve in an advisory capacity. Despite this inconsistency, it is only briefly acknowledged in one episode. Although the theme music of the series bears similarities to that of the original movie, they were composed by different individuals, with Lionel Newman likely influencing the TV series' music. Following the departure of Robert Lansing due to difficulties on set, his character was written off in the second season premiere. He was replaced by Paul Burke, who had previously appeared in two episodes of the first season, including the pilot. Notable alumni from New Trier Township High School East, where Bruce Dern attended, include Ralph Bellamy, Charlton Heston, Rock Hudson, Hugh B. O'Brien, Anne Margaret, Penelope Milford, Virginia Madsen, and Liz Fair. TV Guide reported that Lansing's firing in 1964 prompted the highest volume of letters they had received since the assassination of President Kennedy in 1963. In the series, Bruce Dern, known for his roles in various films, shared the screen with Samuel L. Jackson in multiple movies. Both Bruce and his daughter Laura Dern have acted alongside Jackson, with Bruce appearing in Uncle Tom's Cabin, Django Unchained, and The Hateful Eight, while Laura starred alongside Jackson in Jurassic Park. Major Harvey Stovall, a character in the show, was inspired by Colonel William Howard Hank Stovall, a real-life World War I ace pilot who served in World War II as the Assistant Chief of Staff for Personnel for the 8th Air Force. Additionally, all B-17s in the European theater of operations were equipped with nose guns, with some B-17G models featuring plexiglass noses housing at least two guns. 
This setup provided essential defensive capabilities during missions. Set against the backdrop of wartime aviation, the series utilized authentic combat footage, much of it sourced from the documentary Memphis Bell. Additionally, a real-life aircraft from Edward T. Maloney's Air Museum in California was brought to Chino for filming purposes. The 918th Bomb Group, fictionalized from the 306th Bomb Group, was stationed at Archbury, mirroring the real-life Alkenberry. In an episode from the first season, General Savage's friend, General Wiley Crow, reflects on Savage's magnetic personality, noting that interactions with him are always intense. The soundtrack of 12 o'clock high shares segments with Star Trek. Bruce Dern, known for his roles in various films, appeared in four Oscar-nominated movies. Characters from the original film, like Brigadier General Frank Savage and Major Harvey Stovall, feature prominently in the series. Major Joe Cobb and Major Doc Kaiser, among others, appear intermittently. Lieutenant Colonel Ben Gately, renamed Joe Gallagher, assumes a more significant role as the series progresses. Following Savage's demise, Gallagher takes command of the 918th Bomb Group. In one episode during a confrontation between two characters, both are shown wearing 50 star flag patches instead of the correct 48 star patches. This error highlights a small inconsistency in the show's attention to detail. The series was parodied in Mad Magazine under the title 12 O'Crocked High, showcasing its popularity and cultural impact. Additionally, the replacement of Keith Davenport by Frank Savage as the commander of the 9018th is mentioned in the show, but the reason for this change is not elaborated upon. In a notable episode from the first season, Gallagher mentions losing two brothers during WW2, yet in a subsequent episode from the second season, it's revealed that his older brother Preston is alive and serving in North Africa. In early November 2022, a collection of Domini Frontiers scoring from the series was released by La La Land Records. Originally, George Nader was slated for the role of Brigadier General Frank Savage, eventually portrayed by Robert Lansing in the series. In the initial episodes, Brigadier General Frank Savage wore a normally two-leather flight jacket. Later, his attire changed to another jacket with sharp collar points, stars in the middle of the epaulettes, and a cigarette pouch on the left arm. Production of the first season was marked by tension due to Robert Lansing being difficult to work with. Throughout the series, family and friends of Joe Gallagher appear or are mentioned, while Frank Savage's acquaintances are solely from his time at West Point. During World War II, Allied pilots developed a unique system for communication, using the imaginary face of a clock to relay enemy positions. The term 12 o'clock high signified a direct front position, while 6 o'clock indicated an enemy directly behind. The terms high and low conveyed the enemy's altitude, and even denoted being level with the pilot's plane. In one notable instance during the first season's seventh episode titled Decision, Brigadier General Frank Savage found himself seated in the co-pilot's position, a singular occurrence in the series. When seeking sponsors for the show, producers approached Volkswagen executives, showcasing actual wartime bombing footage. During the presentation, an executive recognized the bomb facility as the Volkswagen plant, which had produced cars for the German army. Upon this revelation, the executives promptly declined to sponsor the show. In the intricate world of war dramas, 12 O'Clock High stands out with its unique title origins, rare on-screen moments, and an unexpected encounter with potential sponsors that shaped the series. In the mid-1960s, a significant change occurred behind the scenes of a popular television series. Robert Lansing, the lead actor in the show, found himself replaced due to network demands. ABC, the network airing the series, insisted on his replacement as a condition for renewal. The reason cited was a shift in the show's time slot from 10 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. According to sources, Lansing's replacement, Paul Burke, was considered a better fit for the earlier time slot, as he appeared younger despite being older than Lansing. These adjustments reflected the network's strategic decisions regarding scheduling and audience appeal. During its run, 12 o'clock high faced a tragic incident when one of its main actors, Robert Lansing, departed from the series due to creative differences. Lansing portrayed the character General Savage, a pivotal figure in the show. His sudden exit left fans shocked and saddened as they had grown accustomed to his presence and performance. Despite efforts to continue the series without him, Lansing's absence left a noticeable void that affected the dynamic of the show. The departure of such a central figure undoubtedly left a lasting impact on the series and its viewers.